everyone, and welcome to another wonderful, wacky OTR Central Q&A video. Yeah, we're going to answer some questions about professional wrestling. See? Yeah. Thanks to all of you that took to your Twitter devices and sent your questions in there. Greatly appreciated. Here are some of the best, or just some of the ones that I chose to put in here. Lots of other ones will go unanswered. Balls fan is kicking us off by asking, when do you see NWA Power getting a television deal? Probably not anytime soon. Honestly, they need to grow their audience quite a bit before we start talking about them getting a television deal. Right now, I'm not trying to knock the rock the boat with them at all. I'm enjoying what they are and who they are and what they're representing right now. Let's not put the cart before the horse. There's quite a ways to go to get that. It is kind of like the ultimate niche product, and I am okay with that right now. Uh, M. Rout. Uh-oh, Mr. Rout question. This ought to be a good one. Want to do a collaboration video? <laughs> what we should do is a collaboration video about the hundreds of ways that Christian is awesome. And RVD too. Let them down. The whole never show. Mr. Rout, you're on! That's big, shocking, earth-shattering news, isn't it? Exciting stuff. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe, we could get some canned heat, canned heat. Anyways, Ken, will SmackDown actually make it through their five-year Fox deal? Um, great question. Five years is a long, long time. Would it surprise me in a couple of years that Fox cuts their losses and puts them on FS1? No. Um, <laughs> if, if, if SmackDown continued to get around 2 million viewers, would they probably stay for the entire five years? Probably. Fox would just be disappointed with the return in the investment that they got. MC Cycle 417 is the overly sensitive society today helping to cause wrestling to be in the shape that it's in. It certainly isn't helping. Like you feel like you can't do anything or say anything that is pushing the edge, controversial, or just flat out wrong because instead of what we would have done in some of those cases in the past to draw money, now everybody gets outraged about everything and everybody has fucking feelings and emotions about things. And that certainly doesn't help with the actual wrestlers in the business because so many of them want to be liked and want to be cool because of insecurities and needing to feel accepted, which is kind of pathetic in and of itself that uh, they don't embrace the hate. They don't embrace the controversy. These guys can't take heat. Uh, so there are many reasons wrestling's in the shape that it's in today. That is a contributing factor, but not the sole one, not the exclusive one. Sue Pete asks, you have to buy two, sell three in the peak of their career. Macho Man, The Undertaker, Eddie Guerrero, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho. That is an excellent effing question. But when all is said and done, give me the macho man, ooh, yeah! And due to longevity and versatility and flexibility of character, give me the Undertaker. Rest in peace. It probably has to be those two. The King asked, did they drop the ball too hard on Strowman? Well, I most certainly don't think they ran with it the way they should have. Um, you know... The bottom line is, is you have certain windows of time sometimes with some guys that no matter what you have planned or no matter what you're doing, you have to change those plans. You have to roll with what you got. Maybe not be the situation you envision, but it's the situation you've got. You have to deal with it. And the fact that they never had Strowman go over Lesnar, they never had Strowman go over anybody super notable in a big time spot in a big time match in a world title match. You know, now he's just kind of left to be big show without the world championships to support him. That's pretty much what it is. So yeah, they dropped the ball too hard with him. Troy the Gamer HD, who is the most underrated star in WWE today? <sighs> underrated star would be trying to say that they actually have stars, which they do not. Uh, but let's humor the conversation for just a second. Um, you know, I got back to the previous question. I do think Braun Strowman. You know, somebody watching this will probably call him Care Bear and Rage on me, but I don't care. Like A lot of people are going to look at him just because he's huge and monstrous looking at that why he's getting the push. Well, he's actually become a decent in-ring performer. He's adequate on the mic. He's got a shtick. He's got a gimmick. And the company won't go all the way with him, whereas by comparison, Seth Rollins has none of those things going for him, frankly. And 
the company forces them down your throats and pushes them to the moon. So by comparison, I would say Braun Strowman. Bone Stan account. Is Shorty G a good name for a 5'8 dude needing to get over? If this was the Attitude Era and you were going to put some type of rapping gimmick or some type of uh, chauvinist pig type of gimmick on him, you were going to do something that would actually get him over, then I would not have an objection to this. We're not going to get any of that, and you fucking good and well know it. We're expected to believe that a guy that was a former Olympic wrestler has issues because of his height. Like It's just dumb. Just No, it's dumb. It's Vince trolling, and it's Vince being a moron. That's all that is, period. Cordy Fortier. Possible NXT's goal at this point is just to take away AEW viewers. Like, I look at AEW going to Wednesday nights two hours on USA. And I think there are a couple of key motivating factors here for Vince. Number one, if USA Network was going to give you $50 million a year for the next two years to put your show on two hours every Wednesday night instead of showing you on the network, you'd do the same thing. Number two, any type of audience that he can siphon away from AEW, surely that's a factor. It's not the primary driver or factor. The $50 million to run a show on network television for two hours that you are already showing for running for an hour every week is the primary motivating factor. The AEW thing, sure. If you can undercut their rating and take 750, 800,000 eyeballs away from AEW potentially, then that certainly isn't a bad deal. Uh, certainly isn't a bad deal. And then the third thing is, to me, it might be a way for Vince to kind of serve some humble pie up to Triple H and those that believe that God himself was going to come someday take over for Vince and right all the wrongs of Raw and SmackDown in the main WWE brands, which is just foolish. Just foolish. And you see the results with NXT. His show is shit. And it's catering to the most hardcore of hardcore fans, and even those hardcore fans aren't really digging it because it's just matches. It has to be more. Um, so to your question, is that a goal? Yes, but I do not think it is the primary goal. I actually think, number one, that I mentioned the money factor is the primary goal. I really think number two goal is to humble Triple H. And if you think about it, you say, well, Vince is going to try and undercut others. Which do you think really motivates him more at this point in time? Undercutting AEW or humbling his son-in-law and sending a message? We talk about petty level Vince here. I guarantee you the sending the message to Hunter is way more important to him than undercutting AEW's viewership. I promise you. Uh, Chrysler San Martin. When is the NWA power review, you black woman lover? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, we're now three episodes in, aren't we? So i got to figure out if I'm going to record three reviews individually um, or if I'm going to do one big massive review of episodes one, two, and three all together. I don't know. And I've targeted Thursday night as the night to finally be able to set aside. I'm not going to do any recording for football. I'm not going to do any other recording on the wrestling channel. I'll do the AEW review Wednesday night after the show and try to leave Thursday. Assuming I don't fall asleep as soon as I get off of work after 11, 12 hours, I will do my best to get the power reviews caught up because I enjoy watching the shows. I want to be able to review them, and it's just falling down the cracks right now. Rick asks, Better pay-per-view, WrestleMania 3 or WCW Sin 2001? They are both equally legendary for their own reasons. Having to choose between the two of them, I can only come to one conclusion. Fuck WrestleMania 17 and fuck Dave Meltzer. How about that? This will matter. Sid broke himself in half for your entertainment. Oh, in a TLC match of WrestleMania, Ooh, Austin turned on The Rock and he aligned with McMahon. Who gives a crap? Sid rules the world! Jacob Smith asks, Are we witnessing the end of wrestling as a mainstream commodity? I would certainly argue that it's not looking good. I would certainly argue more and more it's becoming a niche type of a nerd product without the large nerd following that you would get for like comic book movies and so forth. So, that's not good. Might not be at the true end, but it is wilting. It is dying, that's for sure. God bless. Thoughts on Raven and were you a fan? Yes, going back in that time, I thought that was a perfect type of gothy kind of creepy. And again, even though my life is your kid, I hate everyone and everything. I'm going to take it out of everyone. And look at me. I'm this counterculture cult type of cuck. You know? <laughs> if I don't go my way, I'm going to cut myself. I'm going to tell other people to cut themselves. Like, I grew up with people like that in school. 
So seeing Raven at the same time as I was seeing people doing that type of shit, like it really resonated with me. So yes, I was a fan because I totally bought it, totally believed it. Like that's the way it always came across to me. He did come across that way to others, but I thought it was perfectly, he was perfectly situated as a character at that time in the mid nineties. It was perfect. Charlie Bell, is NWA Power the best weekly wrestling show? For my taste, for my purposes, for what I like in wrestling, yes, and it's not even freaking close. Not even close. But again, that is my perspective. That is my taste. That is what I enjoy about wrestling. NWA Power is by far the best. Chris Valde, are AEW fans praising the product because they're tired of WWE's BS? And there could be a little bit of an element of that, Chris, where there's a fear of if you say anything negative about AEW that it's going to give opportunities for WWE bots to pounce, and maybe some of it could just be people are just sheepish marks and they can't think for themselves and everything is great and awesome, and they have to immerse themselves in that way and go totally and completely all in and can't connect with reality in any way. And if that's the case, that's fine too. I think some of it could be that they're tired of WWE's BS and they're trying to help prop up another product. Sure. Because WWE is so bad. Like AEW doesn't have to do much in theory and potentially be better. Um, Keys 10 asks, who is one current WWE guy that would help AEW? Uh, Randy Orton. I still think some of the stuff with Orton and his contract being up next year, he's leveraging AEW as he should. It's a very wise thing for him to do. That's how you know he's a Breakfast Club member. He's not fucking around. He's not just going to go to the table with... Only asking e or WWE for something. He's going to put one side against the other, and he's smart to do so. He's smart to do so because he's going to come out of it with a big deal either way. But for a guy that was part of the Fortune of Four, for a guy that was forced down people's throats, the guy from Evolution, the guy from Legacy, the legend killer, Royal Rumble winner, what, 13, 14 time, whatever the hell it is, world champion, a guy that you associate as a WWE lifer all of a sudden now goes to AEW? Like, if you really want my honest opinion, I think Randy Orton is more of a game changer for an AEW than if a CM Punk was. Because you could see a CM Punk going to AEW much more easily than you could a Randy Orton. A Randy Orton is somebody that you more closely associate with the enemy, with WWE, whereas CM Punk, you kind of associate as CM Punk. You know, you got the ROH stuff, you got Japan stuff, you got WWE stuff, sure, but that, not with Randy Orton. Randy Orton is WWE through and through. Now you come in where you bring in CM Punk and you have an uphill battle trying to make him a heel. You bring Randy Orton to AEW. He's your top heel from day one. Fuck a Jericho. Fuck everybody else. It's Orton is the guy. He's the guy. He is the heel beyond question. And I could see him being the penis that he is in real life, living up to it, owning it, and embracing it, and loving the hate. So he would be the guy that could help them the most. And why can't new fans understand it takes more than moves to get over? Because they've been listening to Meltzer and his cucks for all these damn years. Um, a lot of newer fans didn't grow up in a time where they actually saw that wrestling was more about moves, more than just about moves. It was about other things. Um, and kind of as a result, to be able to justify watching wrestling at this point, because you don't get characters, you don't get stories, you don't get these other things, you don't get great talkers. The only thing you got are the moves that they do in the ring. And I mean, it's kind of a reflection of our television that we see today. So many of these reality shows and so forth is lazy garbage. It's not creative. It's not good. But people like it. It gives them that cheap thrill. Joshua Bryant, thoughts on WWE trying and failing to buy pro wrestling? Noah, don't know, don't care. How about that? Stephen Hilton, if SmackDown continues its ratings decline, does Pritchard get fired? Uh, dude sucks a lot of cock backstage and kisses a lot of Vince ass. He's been got, let go before, so very, very possible. Andrew Harrington, ever listened to Jericho's podcast with Moxley last May? No. We're in a weird place now, aren't we, with wrestling? That the wrestlers are the biggest marks, and they do the biggest mark shit. See wrestling podcasts. Just saying. It's cool that they do, but let's call it how we see it. So no, I don't fucking listen. I don't really listen to anybody's fucking podcast. Fire and Venom. Close this up. Wednesday Night War. Still in its building stage or flat out bust? They're still in its building stage. Not sure what they're building. Not sure how much longer they're going to be building. Could potentially gravitate towards the bus status, but I'm not going to put it there just yet. So anyways, thanks to all of you that submitted your questions for this week's Q&A video. Got some other content coming up soon, so check it out. Thank you. Remember, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And I am one angry wrestling, excuse me, man, and it is about 7 a.m. here. Upload this, and I'm heading to work. Yeehaw.